All right. Well, hello, YouTube viewers of the Black oh, Podcast. I didn't uh, see you there. there. Ah, I did it first. I did it at the same time from what I heard. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Anyway. I was trying to take credit for it. Just right underneath the cartwheels. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to do something uh, new for us. Uh, we're going to do something. We'll workshop the name. I don't know what it's going to be yet. But for now, we're going to call it BTP Reacts. I like uh, it. Cut, print, take the cake. <laughs> So because we record everything a week in advance now, whenever cool things like Will of Time uh, news comes out, if we address it in the episode, it, it's uh, like an entire week and a half after the news. It's so cold. what we're going to do it's is cold. we're going we're gonna to set aside time that we would normally have for longer pre-recordings, and we're going to do this when uh, there's new uh, news out there that we want to talk about and, and react to. It would probably mainly be the official Watt on Prime accounts uh, news, though uh, we reserve the right as always to change that. So with today being Wednesday, of course- It December, is Wednesday, my dudes. December 2nd. <laughs> we, got a, uh, we got a new dope look at what is probably, <sighs> at least in the top three most infamous uh, artifacts infamous. from the Wheel of Time. Infamous. Yes. Infamous. Yeah. Famous or inf I don't know. It's super freaking cool. And it's been a month since our last Watt Wednesday. So that was cool. Yesterday, Watt on Prime, uh, if you're not it, following Watt on Prime on Twitter and on Facebook, they do have a Facebook account as well that I also follow because and I'm they have an all Instagram. the juicy nugs. And they have an Instagram. If you're not following them, you should, because that's where you're getting Do first it. official announcements. That's where their first official announcements are coming through. Now, today's What Wednesday, hashtag What Wednesday, was freaking amazing. And here it is on screen. Now, just a screen grab of the announcement for you to look at, because it's not like you didn't already know what we were talking about. But if you didn't, there you go. You can look and find it and you'll know what to look for. Oh, Best part God. is all of the people who went to go find it and then you threw that up and they were like, all right, cool. <laughs> Never mind. Don't need to go find Guess it. Yes, I don't need Me. to. <laughs> Jump no. on you because I won't do it again. <laughs> you just stay here. I'll fucking do it again. Yeah, so it was, kind of, it was kind of hyped up because uh, I think it was yesterday, Tuesday, they yes. tweeted out uh, Wednesday approaches or Wednesday comes wednesday approaches yeah wednesday approaches with like a sword or dagger emoji and of course yeah, they were the teasing it started. there yeah. was the tease right there yeah basically uh, like when you pulled up the tweet it would be like accurate and it is currently went there the the actual announcement is currently their pinned tweet um so if you see this probably before the next big announcement, it'll probably still be the pen tweet on their Twitter account um, with some awesome stuff. I mean, there's, there's a ton of uh, epic stuff to happen from it. There was a lot of fan engagement. Um, I know they directly responded to Unraveling the Pattern mm -hmm. uh, and did a couple other things. Sarah Nakamura was on top of it. She did a couple of those uh, Twitter fleets talking uh, about what I think was a very fair a statement there were a fair number of people that after announcement they were very disappointed that there wasn't more to it and it's like really really i i can see that again is since it's been a month and the ones that they did you know a number i i'm mean, the first ones that they did were mm -hmm. you know like multiple cast members right. well again i'm not agreeing with that sentiment like again just wait for the tv show if you just want the whole thing then great just get the whole thing when the tv show comes out but i can see a little bit of disappointment in a single picture given that it's been so long and the the extent of how much they were giving us at the beginning. Yeah. Well, now, two things to take into account here. First off, they're busier trying to get things wrapped up and they are facing the same type of pandemic-related constraints that the rest of us are. So those Correct. big media dumps, I mean, 
I, I agree with you completely, Daniel. Like I, I, I agree that it's less information, but I think yes. when given context, I think people need to be no, no, no. a little understanding. As I said, I am not agreeing with those yes. people on the, but I wanted more, but right. I am agreeing with the sentiment that, oh, I'm a little it, surprised. It is, it is it factually correct to say that it is less content. Exactly than we were getting in the yes. If you're whining about that, go away. <laughs> and <laughs> I will say that if you notice, they give more, they, they do a really good job of giving a lot, but not giving much at all. Yes. Right? So, well, and that's true. That is one of the things that I have really appreciated about all of their trailers. I have been very hesitant to actually go ahead and, and actually watch or listen to or anything all of the the trailers that they've put out because i'm very right. much the kind of person who i know i'm watching this series i don't right. need to there is no question um i don't need to figure that out i don't need to figure out what story they're telling me to figure out whether i'm interested right. because i know nothing about it i know i'm watching it it's like every marvel movie since the avengers oh, sure sure, sure. I know that I'm seeing it. I don't need to watch the trailer and have anything in the movie ruined for me. And they've done a really good job of those being more like hype trailer kind of things mm -hmm. where they don't actually tell you anything about like deep down stuff. It's just very exciting surface level stuff. Right. So uh, something was done to maybe help mitigate. Uh, I don't think that was the motive behind it. Uh, to help mitigate maybe that feeling of, well, this we want it more. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about the actual thing. Uh, that, of course, being the reveal of Tam's Heron Mark Blade, which Correct. Josh was so kind to remind me that I apparently identified when the Faldara pictures were leaked. Um, yes. So... I'm going to take that once in a lifetime small victory of mine and frame it. Uh, Mom already <laughs> took the picture. So <clears throat> how stupid would it be if I framed just a, a, just a little text thing? Like I called it Andrew. <laughs> you should. I think that'd be great. No, well, um, as long as you, as long as you say, I called it Andrew, uh, you know, and then Wayne Gretzky, it needs to be in that order. Okay. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, so the, and the the image you were talking about the, the only reason I I uh, recognize it is because I went back and looked at the images and I recognize that handle mm -hmm. that the the hilt of the sword matches and so what I've got to to know I've got to say like that's got to be it now I don't know that there was any way you could have known that at the time <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But I still, no I still think training. it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I assume it's because well, especially because let's be honest, the uh, the pictures in the book of like the little you know chapter headings, yes. as well as the uh, you know fan created though it was also you know licensed fan created uh, Heron Mark Blade that is the old official oh, yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Don't look like that. I mean, like again, they're not totally off. It's not completely different. Yeah, but they are distinctly not the same. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But so, there was a lot of cool that came from because we got to see, uh, like, uh, with the reveal of the wine spring in, starts with a view of the book. Yeah, uh, and the word blade, uh, which obviously wine spring in, which reveal did not start with. Then it zooms out with a, a highlighted one sentence section uh, about the blade, and then it moves over into concept sketches, art of the blade. Yeah. Um, a very nicely uh, or well put together kind of scene of it of the the computer generated image sitting right. across, sitting on top of a work table with tools appearing and then the the backdrop fades away you get an actual view of the of the blade and then uh, it's a four scenery uh, the music's going on I think uh, several people have identified it identified it as they believe from two steps from hell um, so instrumental. Uh, song that is really dope. I actually, I was like, somebody named a song I actually remember listening to, because um, <laughs> I think the band is uh, To Glory or the composers, how, however you word it. Um, and then after a moment, the the scene turns to something more uh, dusk or night, 
uh, probably the kind of night you would assume to be good for shooting uh, scenes that aren't meant to be incredibly dark because they want you to see things. Uh, and then a zoom out uh, to it being a very small clearing in woods with some fog moving in from the right, possibly smoke, because in the background there are sounds of battle. Yes. Uh, so I don't know if that's, if that's left over from the music. I don't remember hearing battle sounds in the music, but I also haven't listened to uh, Two Steps from Hell and Forever, if that is indeed the music. Uh, but uh, I've talked enough. What were your first thoughts whenever you saw it, Josh? So immediately my th first thoughts went to like what Daniel was saying, sort of a compare and contrast of the visual from the original fan, original licensed sword to this one. And so the blade is about the same. Um, it's yeah. a curved blade. It's a katana style blade. It's got a long handle. That's a, two-handed handle but it's still light and able to be handled very very well it's a nice but the biggest differences is uh, the ones i noticed right off there are three differences or four differences one the heron on this blade is actually it looks like it's bronze inlaid i don't know if it's actually inlaid or if they just like soldered a bronze heron on this on the blade itself Whereas the old one had a, a had an outline, like a drawing, like a laser. Like it was etch. like etched. Yeah. And so, I mean, and that was cool. And I, I like this a little bit better because I like the color contrast on the blade itself. Um, well, and to be fair, it does also make it that much more noticeable. So you even yeah. kind of go through, back through your mind as far as the book exactly. is concerned and go, oh, no wonder everybody fucking notices it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And then, and then the, the hilt, or, or I'm sorry, not the hilt, the, uh, the guard there, right above the handle. This one is just a round, flat, Japanese-style suka or guard, mm -hmm. which I think looks really cool. The original one had the suka or guard, but then it had like these two little spiny things coming off the guard as well mm -hmm. that were, that were um, indexed to the blade. So as the blade was like this, the front spine was coming around here, the back one coming up. It was kind of cool. It was a fun little thing, but it, you know, ultimately I think it doesn't serve a lot of functional purpose, sure. um, which I believe is why it was left off here. Then of course, this one has a leather wrapped handle, which is going to be really good for grip. The old one had a, a suede handle with a gold filigree twining going around it, which again, looks cool, but you know, Harder when you're, handle. when you're handling it, when you're moving it around it, it doesn't, it, 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 it's a little bit more difficult to keep your hand on. Um, and then especially if it were to get, you know, someone's blood on it or something like that, it might get yeah. pretty slippery. Vance and with then, the Gleeman uh, actually identified it as uh, a, a sub, uh, the, the, the guard. That's, yeah. Because that's the suba, right? I thought, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I said suka, which is the handle. So it's suba. Yes. But he identified it as, um, with it being more of a traditional style, opposed to the inline cross guard. Um, yes. Kind of feels that maybe it makes it feel a bit too first agey. Um, well, and if you, I don't know enough point, to know. Though. If you zoom in <laughs> on the, the, the video, the screen still, you can see they've got a picture of them and they're very, very intricate. And it, I can't tell, I'm looking at it right now and I can't tell if it's, if there's herons like in it, in the suba as well. But it definitely looks very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and then the fourth and final difference that I noticed is that the original one, the old one, has a very pronounced bronze pommel on it. This one mm -hmm. does not. Correct. This one looks like a traditional, again, a traditional katana with instead of a pommel on the end, it's got just a cap or, yep. or something on the end of it. Um, my guess is that there's going to be a heron on that. And one thing I've noticed, and I, I notice a lot of people have brought this up as well. In the books, obviously Rand is branded with a heron because there's a heron on the palm. Now, in the traditional katana, there are uh, pins that go through the handle that hold the sword in place. And then the swordsmith will often put like a decorative piece on one side. What a lot of people don't realize is that on the upper side of the blade, if you're holding the blade like this and the sharp end is pointing that way, 
the handle on the upper side of the handle will have a little decoration right here that fits into the palm of your hand. And that is generally so you can index the blade. So you know where you're holding it so that you can identify which direction it's pointing in the dark or whatever the case may be without having to look. My guess is because we do only get a vision, a visual of the left side of the blade. My guess is that there's going to be a heron on the underside of that blade. And it's just a surprise that they've left for us. Well, oh. and it's, it's also interesting because the herons are actually significantly smaller on the new blade. Yes. That's, they that are is another actually thing. holdable, if yes. you will. And you could get an entire heron that's on that blade branded on your hand. If you had your hand on that blade. Yes. Um, rather than the old version, which actually the heron, if I remember correctly, is actually kind of elongated on the blade and it's actually maybe about, you know, yay long. And if you put your hand on that blade, you would not actually get the full heron on a blade or on right. your hand if that were to be superheated. And so it's, it's definitely an interesting thing because it, I feel like it kind of in, in some ways, Josh needs that uh, ornamental piece on the part of it that is that is outside for people to be able to see the herons when the blade is not uh, out of the sheath. Right. However, and that's, that's it's gonna definitely be thing. a situation where if he is pulling the blade and he is holding it in a certain way, you could absolutely get that blade or that heron from the blade onto your hand. Sure. And the instances in the book where he actually gets them on his hand are very strange dream sequence kind of things where they could make easily a reason for him to be holding the blade like that. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So for me, I didn't really go that much in depth and like when I thought about the sword. I mean, <clears throat> I noticed that I, that the way the materials that were chosen to make it and, and everything makes it blend together very well. You have this very dark leather yes. handle wrapping that goes into this very nicely done, it appears, uh, bronze style uh, guard into the bronze uh, heron that is on the blade uh, into the brighter, of course, like shinier uh, metal that makes up the blade. And that my first thought was like, wow, what a beautiful way to bring a blade together using yes. drastically different color elements that actually kind of does like a kind of tool-esque kaleidoscope kind of thing or spectrum down in the colors to make it blend together well but what drew my attention was the end of the clip uh, where i mentioned earlier you could hear sounds of battle uh the switching to a dark scene the the zooming out where you can see it's at least in a, a fair dense part of wooded area um it immediately made me think of uh, a scene from winter night um i can for me very easily see uh, Ran has Tam is up against the tree. Ran's checking out the area or something, you know, uh, trying to figure out what's going on, making sure it's safe. And for some reason, the blade is on the ground, or maybe this is where he's about to go back off into the farm to get what they need. And Tam is, you know, like it fucking take the take the stabby thing, like. Fuck it. <laughs> Um, I could very easily, I think, see that. I very much want to believe that this is... Uh, yeah, it's right before a, it gets a bunch of Narg blood on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I very much want to believe that this is, though maybe edited, uh, to be different from the exact scene we're going to see in, in the show. Uh, I very much want to believe that it is uh, at least a part of a scene from a show. That's why I kind of think it could be fog, it could be smoke. Because um, I don't know how... I think they're going to very accurately portray the distance between the, the Althor farm and Amon's field. Right. Um, but I think this could be uh, something where they're, they're really closer, I think, to Amon's field, maybe drawing closer and Rand actually witnesses part of uh, the fighting uh, in Amon's field. That's what I think. That's what I'd love to see. Um, yeah. I probably only you, I've probably already used my once in a lifetime, get something right chip. Uh, so I'll probably be wrong, but <laughs> uh, I, could, I, I could very easily see it because I, I think I think that they're going to try to pull some inspiration from Robert Jordan, not just because of the words written, uh, but his 
giving you hints to things far before you know they're hints to things. Um, right, right, right. So I wanted to be one of those things where the DiCaprio meme comes out when we see this part of, in the show and we're like, <laughs> the, we'll be the Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. meme. Um, but yeah, so we didn't really leave ourselves a lot of time uh, to talk about the other aspect, which how do you bring all this down into 30 minutes? I mean, we're very abbreviately, uh, in a very brief fashion, going over even just the video. Um, but very shortly after its release, our lovely, fantastic, amazing showrunner retweeted it uh, with the statement, and I'll put it up on screen here for everybody to see. Uh, to celebrate this first look at the hair and mark blade from Watt on Prime, I'll answer 10 questions in the next 30 minutes about production design on the show in general and how we're approaching it. Just reply to this post with your question. Uh, and uh, in true Ray fashion, he got lost in the answers and thought he could answer one more and turns out that he'd already answered 10. Uh, yep. So by the end of the day, whatever that time is for Rafe, uh, whatever question that hasn't been answered that has the most likes uh, on Twitter will get answered uh, as much as he can. So um, he has said it may just be a giant waffo. So yeah, <laughs> there's some really cool things in there. There was the, um, I, don't, I don't know if I call it a bomb drop, but there was a statement that there will be no Moraine staff. We will not get uh, her using a staff as we read it in the books when she retells the story of Manetherin. We'll, we'll see how that happens. I think it'd be cool to, to have her go Johnny Cash and just be in a ring of fire. Um, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, I did. I always imagine it as the scene from uh, Lord of the Rings where Gandalf just like starts to get a little bit bigger yeah. and his voice starts to get deeper and he's Bilbo Baggins. That, and I, I've just always imagined it as something akin to that where like, again, I feel like Moraine would do it so subtly that by the end of the scene, she's 12 feet tall. Mm -hmm. and so I, much like, louder really and hope. deeper but you never even really noticed it was happening because it was just so subtly up every yes. single time yes absolutely i i love displays of magic that are attention grabbing like you see what's ha happening but there's not the big cheesy special effects. Like one yes. beautiful example of this is in The Labyrinth with David Bowie and the crystal thing. That was a real guy doing that. Like it, they just make it look super cool in the context. And I think that not, I think Moraine's staff, I think this is a bomb. I, I really do. I'm like, whoa, that's, that's a big piece of info. But I'm glad he gave it to us because my dumb ass would be watching episode one going, where's your staff? <laughs> but, well, and of course, I also love I that think it's the right in call. some ways because when it comes right down to it, it kind of, I, I like and I don't like it. Because on one hand, it kind of eliminates the question that Egwene keeps asking Moraine of like, okay, when do I get a staff? When do yeah, I get right. to use like the the magic or the you know the one power using the staff? And Maureen keeps on being like, "Child, this not is the a fucking stick. staff. This He's is a stick." stick. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like I kind about of the damn appreciated stick. <laughs> that because that always seemed like a precursor to me about later on when the wise ones are like, "Why the fuck are you waving your hands around like that?" And right? Egwene's like, "Because this is how you weave." And they're like, no, it's not. And it's that moment in Doctor Strange where he's like, I can't do it because I can't move my hands right. And then the fucking, the the other guy with no hands does the thing. And she's like, it's not about your hands, motherfucker. <laughs> Here's a dude with no hands answering <laughs> your questions. And but, um, so I, I have to admit that I, I, I will miss that precursor. Though, again, I do kind of appreciate that that just hits even further home it's not about uh items yeah I mean, sometimes to be, to it can be, fair, be the staff because i mean isn't like really angriol and sangriol and things like that uh sure but if it's just a stick that helps you channel it's just a stick <laughs> yeah and we've covered that in one of our episodes so check it out listen Indeed. to all of our episodes obviously but uh we don't have time to go through all the answers Certainly. uh 
that was just part of one answer to one question. Uh, there, as of the time we're talking now, there are 10 total answers. There will be an 11th um, from light count from what I can see right off. Looks like it's probably going to be uh, Matt Hatch's question from the Dusty Wheel. Uh, what set huh, or piece from is. a set are you most excited for us to see? That is not, well, he said no, but not Amon's field and why. Um, they got a, a shining emoji gif endorsement from uh, Sarah Nakamura. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff to go in there. As we are recording this right now, Matt is over with the Dusty Wheel doing uh, the first part of a two-part uh, live stream night where the first part they're just talking about the reveal and, and Rafe's answers. Um, so they definitely have plenty of time to do that. Yeah. We well, don't. and of course, yeah. I mean, like, not to not to rain on anyone's parade or anything like that, but I will admit that I kind of do like not necessarily going over every single question and like doing whatever. Because go go look for yourself. I mean, I, and not to like give you homework or not to like give you extra work or anything like that. But I, I mean, it's it's absolutely a worth a look just in general. Because his Rafe's a really good question answer in some ways. Like he gives great answers to a lot of these questions, yes. um, and I I would like for people to see his actual answers. I have uh, and not just hear them through us. Right. And uh, I have but also on, you know it, it gets it more people over to Twitter. Fan. I, I have gone stuff. on to our Twitter and I have retweeted his answers. Great. So if you go to our feed, you can see retweets of all his answers. Just click the answer. You'll be able to see the question. That might help clear up yep. some of the muck. But, you know, maybe you just want to go through Rafe's Twitter because it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Or but, And while you're there, why don't you just go through ours? And give us a follow. <laughs> yep. uh, <laughs> all the links to our website, our social media, all that kind of stuff will be in the description below. Right. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, to get more content from us. Uh, I mean, it'll That's still right. be there regardless, but subscribing is a very nice and swell thing of you to do. Smash it might just give though. us the vapors. Um, <laughs> so all of that, if there's parts of this that you'd like to see us go more in depth for, let us know down in the comment section below, and we can definitely try to orchestrate an episode or a live stream or something uh, when time permits to do that. We're always happy to talk more and more and more about the Wheel of Time. It's kind of uh, what we do. Yeah. Wait, we talk about the Wheel of Time? Oh, man, Sometimes. I'm on the wrong podcast. Yeah, we, t we talk about the uh, the deal, <laughs> the Lord of the Rings DLC that was better than the original game. Ooh, wow. No, no, sh no shade. Wow. Mitch. I'm just a realist. I'm not throwing shade. Still love Lord of the Rings. It well, hurts, thank you but it's accurate. So much <laughs> for listening to our reaction. Overall, Indeed. On the count of three, everybody give your best reaction faces to what you saw when you saw the sword. Okay? So everybody just get down. Just one, two, three. Very nice. Thank like you. Thank hey, you. Thank you. I have faces to use for a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Yes! Thank you all. This has been BTP Reacts. And uh, let us know if you want us to continue this or if you think it's a dumb idea and we should stop while we're ahead. <laughs> if you we think probably it's won't dumb, listen. If you think it's dumb, you're clearly wrong because Andrew has all the best ideas. He does. BTP out! Especially that one where he <laughs> called the sword, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> and until then, check out all of our other content uh, to get your tainty fix.